cell division in particular, cell division um, in somatic cells. So those are cells in every part of our body, like our skin cells or, or um, anywhere else. First, let's look at um, what type of cell this is. So this is a diploid cell. We say diploid because it has two sets of chromosomes. So this will be chromosome number one and it has two versions of it. And this will be chromosome number two and it has two versions of it. So these two chromosomes we call homologous chromosomes and these two will be homologous chromosomes. The, these two chromosomes will have information for the same genes but it might code different characteristics of that genes. For example, if this one here, this dark circle represents, the circle represents eye color. They both have the gene for eye color at this locus, which means at this position. But this one might have the gene for red eyes, and this one might have the gene for white eyes. Now this will be, if it's for example, a fruit fly, or uh, so on. So they can have the, the color of the flower. This might be white flowers, this might be purple flowers, or if it's a human, it could be any other characteristic, like um, being sensitive to certain chemicals or not being sens sensitive. The first step in cell division is to make a copy of the genome so that you can pass one copy to the daughter cell. And this happens during the S phase where the DNA is replicated. And the copy, of, so we'll make a copy of each of these chromosomes. That copy will remain attached to the chromosome. Now, it's important to note that this copy will have exactly the same alleles, the same information. So I already have one right here. This copy will have the same alleles. If we have red circles, we'll have red circles on both. So every chromosome will be replicated. And when, when they're replicated, the copy remains attached. And we call those chromatids. So they're sister chromatids. As long as they are attached, each side will be called a chromatid. And they are called still a single chromosome. So even though this has two sister chromatids, it's still a single chromosome. And we'll call it one chromosome up until they divide, the sister chromatids separate and become different chromosomes in anaphase. We're going to see that. So in, my, in mitosis, sorry, the first step is to condense the chromosomes so they become visible. Normally, if the cell is not getting ready to divide, the chromosomes will be scattered all around the nucleus, so we wouldn't be able to see them. But in prophase, the chromosomes condense and they become visible with a microscope. Then at metaphase, the chromosomes start aligning around the center of the metaphase plate, and we'll have spindle fibers that are attaching the chromosomes actually on both sides. And they will be pulling them so that they are all straight in the center. In anaphase, the next thing that will happen is the proteins that form the centromere that are bringing, keeping those sister chromatids together are going to break down. So in anaphase, we have the breakdown of the centromeres so that the sister chromatids now split and now become separate chromosomes. And this marks anaphase and the chromosomes will start migrating to their different poles, their different sites, and that will be telophase when the migration stops, and this is all because of the spindle fibers that are pulling them. And then we have cytokinesis where the cells will separate their um, cytoplasm, and the cell will just pinch off. And now at the end, so this is some mitosis is now completed, we have two cells and each have two sets of chromosomes. So just the same number of chromosomes and same genetic information as the cell we started with. So in mitosis, we have no change in genetic information. We just have a duplicated and now distributed between two daughter cells.